Folks, hi. Welcome to our special Twitch stream we're going to be doing for Extra Life. Uh, this is going to be money that we're going to be asking you guys to donate. Uh, and to start things off, we're going to go to extralife.org slash team slash raptor. They're the ones that we're doing this stream for. And today we're going to do a stream of Dragon Age Inquisition, which is coming out this November, November 18th, yep. in fact. Uh, and with me is Cameron Lee. Hello. He is my, he's like my stream buddy. Yeah. So we were told, and you will be some disembodied voices as well. We have Connell Pierce here helping us out, uh, making sure everyone sounds good, mm -hmm. and uh, Patrick Demkew, who is, I believe, at Miracle Worker because he really desperately <laughs> wants more Twitter <laughs> followers. I don't know. I love it. I love yeah. it. Thank you, Mike. You should follow him on Twitter. You should, or or don't. I mean, whatever. It's cool. Um, anyway, Patrick is going to be looking at questions on the stream. We're going to have those coming in. Um, and I was talking to Cameron before we started, and um, one thing we, we want to do is take a look at the game and kind of give a bit of an overview, because we figure there might be some people watching because you guys are following the Extra Life stuff. Maybe you've never even seen Dragon Age before, so we're going to make sure we talk about the game a little bit at a high level. But for those of you who've been following along our streams the past little while, it's going to be kind of cool because we're going to go somewhere new. That's right, yeah. It's actually uh, the first time we're going to be showing this location, so a bit of a reveal. <sighs> But Love it's for a good course, right? You know, like having having uh, the ability to donate to, to Extra Life and through the, the Children's Miracle Network is pretty cool. So I think it's a worthy cause to show some new yeah. areas of the game. Yeah, no, it totally is. And I mean, you know, they, they, you know, children of the future. And I'm pretty sure my, my little buddy is <laughs> at home watching. Can we break into song? No, no. Dance. Coordinated dance okay. number to finish the stream. Right. Uh, but no, I mean, my, my kid is probably at home watching right now. Um, I have no kid. Oh, no? No. You will someday, yeah, I bet. One, one yeah, one day. All right. You're very virile. <laughs> uh, so, that said, we should probably get into the game. Uh, do you yep. want to talk at a high level what Inquisition's all about? And what yeah, we're doing uh, so Inquisition, Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, it's a third uh, in the series of games that, that Bioware's been making. Uh, this is definitely the, the first uh, big AAA next-gen RPG uh, that Bioware's created. So the, it's this huge world, massive story, uh, so in a very dark fantasy world. Yeah. Uh, and it's a party-based game, so you have your character who's the Inquisitor, but you also get to meet a lot of uh, really interesting characters along the way. Yeah, and recruit them, yep. equip them, train them, yep. and then work together, coordinating all four of them yep. uh, in combat. And we'll show, once we get out into the game itself, um, how that works. There's multiple interfaces for that. We, yep. <laughs> anyway, it's it's really kind of the DA game we've always wanted to make. It really is, yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely incredibly deep. And, and you know, the, the word Inquisition is is referring to the fact that you form an Inquisition. You form this, this organization yeah. to uncover the truth about this a lot of chaos that's been happening in the world. So. Yeah, that's that's our fun yeah. twist on the hero's journey. You don't just yes. join up with someone. This time you're, you're building it from the ground up. Yeah. So that's been kind of fun. And, of course, we're, we're right near the end. We do come out November 18th in North America, yep. November 21st in Europe. Um, and, and we're just winding down. The team's putting the last few touches, hammering on the last mm -hmm. few bugs we found. QA is working like triple time. They're, yep. they're working so hard. Yep. So, so thanks, if we look guys. like crap, then that's why. Cause <laughs> 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 yeah, we're all, we're all fighting a mild infection that's of some right. sort. Yeah, yep. it's lovely. But that's enough about us. It is. Let's jump into the game. So who are we playing? Who have uh, we got here? So this is uh, my dwarf. So it's a male dwarf. Warrior, who I've spec'd out to be uh, defensive, so uh, a sort of a, a shield uh, defensive warrior. I've crafted a really cool mace uh, rather than a sword for this particular character. Do and wanna, Do you want to hop into inventory and show it off? Yeah, I'll show that off. So there's my dwarf, tattooed up, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can see here... So that's those are custom tattoos, those are dwarf-only tattoos. Dwarf-only yeah. tattoos, yeah, right. yeah. So you can see I've cre created this deadly club. Did you um, name it that? That wasn't no, <laughs> but you can you can name each each item that you you craft in the game. Um, this one was just the name that, that it came up with. I'm not particularly great at my company. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but you can see there some of the cool things. Uh, there's different stats, so uh, crit damage bonus, um, which was based on the materials that I used when I crafted that. Right. That nice. Uh, there's also a couple of empty slots there where you can insert different uh, enchantment runes and a different sort of hilt or haft on the on the. the uh, yeah, and those will, those will change the appearance yep. of the items. So if you put an enchantment on there that's frost, it will actually have a nice frost effect as you run around and go whap people in the face. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So there's also, you know, there's like one-handed weapons and two-handed weapons, uh, things like that, daggers, bows, shields, a whole bunch of different stuff in there. Uh, and then, of course, there's armor, which you can then insert uh, arms and legs into as well, similar to the weapons. Yep. I'll change uh, the and patterns. there's a whole bunch of different slots for accessories and rings that as well. So. Yeah, actually, something something new we hadn't done in the previous DAs is, yeah. is rings that specifically enhance your abilities. 
Um, so you, you, the lunge and slash ring, lunge and slash is an ability a warrior can learn, so you can equip that. It will yep. actually make it more effective, do more damage, or have a longer stun effect, or whatever the, the, the description says. Yeah, so and actually, that's a good point, done. because because I've built this character to be a tank, <coughs> um, I'm going to equip this uh, enhanced challenge ring, because that's going to help me draw aggro. A little right, bit, so yeah, so. That'll, that'll force them to target yep. you for a longer period of time, always useful. Right. Yep. Okay, so, uh, let's... Going. So what we're going to do is, uh, this is uh, a location in, in Haven, but uh, I'm going to go in some of my war council here, uh, and we're going to use the war table to get access to a new area of the world. Now we've shown this a few times, the yep. war table is basically the heart of the Inquisition. It is. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen it before, uh, essentially you come here, you have a group of advisors mm -hmm. who are, they're not like active party members, but they're basically coordinating your soldiers, your spies, and your yep. diplomats. Um, they offer ways you can level up. We have a whole bunch of locations around the world, and you can do both um, follow-up kind of story items where you, you, oh, wow, because you did this, now people are petitioning you to do X. Yeah. Uh, but also you can send all your scouts out to go to new locations. Exactly. Which is what we're, we're going to do here. now, yeah. yeah. So we're going to uh, go into the Storm Coast. And the Storm Coast is, as you can see on the map, it's really, um, I guess, a, will, a real deep wilderness area. It, right. it's, so it's very much on the coast, and... Uh, it's not particularly populated. And we're looking at we're looking after the wardens in this case. We're trying to hunt them down. We haven't yep. seen them. The wardens are of course a massive organization dedicated to fighting a group of bad guys called the Dark Spawn. They yep. were kind of central to Dragon Age Origins. Um, and we want to make sure that we touched on the warden experience to some degree in Inquisition yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So what we did there is we asked Liliana to send her scouts out uh, to get access to this area, set up a forward camp which we can then um, travel to and, and start exploring this area. So we're going to accept that report. And we can quick travel there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slightly different party than what we normally do. Okay. Um, we're going to take Blackwall. <coughs> nice. But He's a warden, so he, he has a, a vested interest in this place. Exactly Perfect. right. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to take Sarah as well, who's an elven rogue. Now, I've actually specced her as a dagger rogue this time right. around. Right. Uh, so the followers can be specced uh, either with their initial sort of weapons, but of course you can change, put whatever weapons Absolutely. you want in them. So yep. I've specced her as a dagger rogue. Uh, and I'm also going to take Vivian. Who's Very amazing. nice. Right. Yeah, Vivian's one of the, the basically the top enchanters from the the original Circle of Magi. Yeah. One of the major themes through Inquisition is that the mages have, have recently sued for their freedom, and that's created a massive ripple effect yeah. throughout the world. Oh, hey, these are always fun. Oh, now, now you showed nice. a couple of those uh, companions there. Are any of the companions tough to find? Uh, so you start with a subset enough to build a full party. Um, mm -hmm. But the other companions are actually earned sometimes via questing, yep. sometimes via major story beats, and sometimes you have to dig them down. Are they tough to find? I wouldn't say, like, super sneaky, hidden, but um, you do have to earn them. You do, sure. and, and some of them can also leave you as well. Yes, they can, yeah. Uh, they, they all Your kind worship. of silently Your track word. how they feel about the choices Your you've been making. Post. Yep. I would have sent word sooner, but our efforts have been delayed. How so? There's a group of bandits operating in the area. They know the terrain, and our small party has had trouble going up against them. Some of our soldiers went to speak with their leader. Haven't heard back, though. So is this um, is this the first time we've shown Male Dwarf? Uh, it is the first time we've ever shown Male Dwarf, <coughs> I believe. So of note, um, John Curry, uh, who voices the Male Dwarf, we have two different voices you can choose from based on male or female. Um, you can you can pick either accent because we're both American and British. Yep. Uh, John Curry um, was a member of the cast for Dragon Age Origins, and he's he's uh, presenting as the dwarf here. In Origins, though, he was Zevran. Okay. He sounded Spanish. Uh, yeah. He was an elf. Yeah. He was much higher in tone. He sounded like this at yeah. all. Uh, kind of Antonio Banderas. And yeah. and here <laughs> it's like hi. Freedom mm. Inquisition. Yeah. Which is awesome. I really love the range he has, and and his audition. Um, when it was brought before us by uh, Caroline Livingstone, who's our casting director, mm -hmm. she was like, "No, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna tell you who this is." Oh yeah. Because she didn't want us to kind of, "Oh no, we're no, no, we can't do Severin because yeah, yeah. It, he sounded nothing like him." Yeah. So when we respond, of course, we'll, we'll get to hear a little bit more of that. And of course, we have Scout Harding here, who is like the leader of our forward scout. She's always the first one in, uh, sets up the camps and that yep. kind of stuff. The murder queen. <laughs> she's yeah, she's a little deadly. I'll do what I can to find our people. Thank you, Your Worship. That's a relief. The soldiers didn't have an exact location for the bandits, but they were starting their search farther down the beach. With all this fuss, we haven't been able to conduct a proper search for the wardens either. Well, good luck, and enjoy the sea air. I hear it's good for the soul. Good for the soul? That code for 
It's going to be rainy and crap. <laughs> it's going to be, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And actually, so, I mean, that's one of the fun things is because we have a party with you. Oh, hey. It's okay. Well, that's that's going to be a problem for later. Yeah. Because uh, we're <laughs> level five, so it's that's not right. a problem for right now. That yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah. We are, uh, this is very early in the game as well. Oh, so, yeah. uh, level five at the moment. Seaweed. How do I know seaweed? Uh, so, I'll talk about that in a yeah, sec. Go yeah. Talk about level five, though. Uh, so, yeah, level five. So, basically, what I've done so far is I've gone through the prologue, uh, leveled up a little bit. Uh, had a, had an opportunity to start investing in some of the the character skills. If I bring that up really quickly, um, and I can show you what I've done with each of the characters here. So, my main character, my Inquisitor, uh, I've definitely specced into a, a, a defensive warrior, as I mentioned. So then we've got Vivian, who I've specced into. Uh, so like a mix pretty much a, a mix of ice and defense. Exactly, yeah. ice and defense, and then I I picked. Uh, the energy barrage because I found a ring that boosts energy barrage as well. So I thought that's cool. yeah, that's that's very nice. And actually, the nice thing about energy barrage as well, it's very flexible because it um, essentially unleashes your staff's energy. Yeah. And staffs have different elements to them. Yeah. So if you want to, like, I really need a big hitting fire one because I'm up against a demon that does cold damage. Yeah. I can swap staffs, and then that's another ability that picks up off of that. Exactly. Uh, Sarah, I've invested in as I mentioned double daggers. Right. Um, so some really break, cool abilities there. Break in the mold. Exactly. Like and I've also of course thrown in uh, the ability to stealth and also uh, I was starting to work my way down to this knockout powder uh, yeah. which puts some many some enemies to sleep. <laughs> That's great because again takes them out of the fight as long as no one damages them exactly. and we built the AI to recognize that which is always fun. Yep and then for uh, Blackwall what I did is start to invest down um, oh, nice. into more of a support warrior so I wanted to get um, Horn of Valor which is going to give right. a, a, a a damage and armor bonus to the whole party because you know, gray, gray wardens are about, or particularly black wall, it's very much about you know yeah. I'm going to be you know help everyone and and uh, gray wardens sort of yeah he's interesting because he's 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 basically he's a warden recruiter right yes. he kind of walks to land and being an inspiration and pulling people in which which really adds a lot of uh, elements to his character yep um, and it's it's kind of neat that you're kind of building in that vein yeah cool. absolutely and so this is uh, our initial camp uh, Inquisition camp we can see our soldiers here. Uh, there's tables up here for us to equip potions and um, do requisitions and things like that. So what you can do through the course of the game is you can find other uh, locations to put your Inquisition camps and uh, push your soul, you push your forces through uh, through the world, which is really neat. Now we got some questions about the inventory. Okay. Uh, whenever you're swapping out uh, clothing and things, does that appear on your character? Absolutely. In fact, I know Sarah's wearing some custom armor right now. Yes. Um, we could go take a quick look at that before we get to some gameplay. We should go yeah. high and look at the water, too. Cause it's and gorgeous, yeah. but what about uh, helmets? Are we able to show a helmet during the uh, <coughs> cinematics or hide helmets for companions? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so, Cam, let's maybe look right now, at Sarah's inventory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so hiding helmets is a global setting. Uh, it's mm -hmm. something you can turn on for the whole party. It, it hides helmets in all cases. In most cinematics, um, conversations where you're getting up potentially close, the characters automatically take their helmets off. So yep. it's fun to have them on when you're adventuring and then they come off for talking. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, hey, can I swap their appearance? Because that's something that uh, uh, we wanted to make sure that you could customize your character. So that's something we wanted yep. to go big on. This is Sarah's kind of basic appearance, no armor. She's, you know, not looking super defensive. Little little natty. And this I love. I really love that you actually, this is um, not crafted, but you looted yep. Inquisition Scout armor. So yeah. this is like what your scouts wear. But again, you notice it's not the same color as the guys at camp because it's using different materials. Exactly. So it's got that awesome kind yep. of red. And you can craft armor using like, oh, I want to use onyx and like this patterned uh, cloth. And yep. you'll end up with a different color armor as a result. Yep. Even though it fundamentally looks the same. Exactly. So this armor is a little bit different, it looks like. <coughs> uh, sorry, in terms of stats. So it's got 83 armor. Right. Um, and a bit more willpower, but I kind of like prefer this. <laughs> so you're making visual. an aesthetic choice at I'm this point? I'm making an aesthetic yeah. choice. Well, that so one looks really good. And yeah. um, it's one of the armors that's kind of a, a full body armor. It covers everything. Um, there are other types of armor that have those upgrades you showcased earlier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've got the, the best uh, daggers that I could find at this level. You know, As I mentioned, it's quite a low level uh, party. but You're almost just starting out. I pretty would say, much, yeah. yeah. So... You know, and, and this area uh, you can get to, it's an entirely optional area, so it's it's one of our uh, exploration areas. Yeah. Alright, some battle going on there between factions. I don't want to get involved in that just yet. Uh, I might do it later on, let them fight it out. Well, there's spoilers on that one. So there are also spoilers. I, I've promised some folks we wouldn't be spoiling things today. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, I mean, look at this water. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love this water. We, we, Grabbed this from uh, Battlefield yeah, and yeah. Uh, modified it, and the artists here have done a lot of work on it. it it's one of the, the big advantages of working with DICE on the um, 
on the, the, the feed is that we've been able to share a lot of our tech. Yeah. <clears throat> so we do a lot of stuff the Battlefield games have never done, and conversely, they had already built some stuff like the, well, the raw rendering engine, but of yeah. course, um, this water effect is, is something that they'd built. And I just, yeah, there have been, I remember one time where I was in this level, I was up, we'll probably get to one of the, the nice high areas, yeah. and just staring at the water, and uh, our art director, Matt Goldman, mm. our uh, level art lead, Ben McGrath and uh, one of our senior level artists were all in the room and they were talking about oh future plans and that kind of stuff and they all kind of went quiet yeah because they were like wow like even they were like okay that's a really nice <laughs> vista yeah um, so again folks if you're joining us just now I know some people are signing in and out and we've got some questions coming in uh, we are doing this today for extra life uh, this is uh, available you can you can really track it because we're doing it for Raptor so extra life dot org slash team slash Raptor R-A-P-T-R uh, and the what we're doing today is basically gathering together donors uh, showing off Inquisition to get you guys excited about it but also so that we can raise money for a good cause this is going to the Children's Miracle Network helping the kids out yep. and you know there's a bit of an incentive the top five donors are going to receive the never settle space edition you can look at uh, the raptor site to get a sense of what that is yep. um and uh they, they actually just let us know that they're going to be doing a raffle of a gaming pc to those who raise you know over a hundred dollars uh and that's courtesy of amd cyber power pc gigabyte x of x astro and myonix i hope i said that right um so all of those are part of the the thing and uh, one last plug, the Raptor guys are doing something really cool. During the stream, at some point, they're giving away a code that can get you a Never Settle Space Edition, uh, which is which basically lets you pick some games, and you get them for free, which is kind of cool. It is cool. Yeah. All there right. we go. So, so back to the game. Back to the game, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're coming up. I'm just going to bring up the map really quickly. So uh, what we're trying to do here is... is, is uh, uncover where some soldiers have been missing and some Grey Wardens. So uh, this area here is basically where our scots, scouts have told us to go and have a search around this right. area. Look they around, disappeared. Try and find stuff. Exactly, yeah. So now, we're getting pretty close. You know, if you don't mind, because yeah. we've been running for a little bit here, yeah. can you? Can we maybe like zoom around the map a little bit? Yeah, so again, spaces in Inquisition are exceedingly large. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've built a, um, a vast multi-region open world, one that lets you uh, move between coasts like this, um, you know, more of a Canadian shield for those of you from Canada, uh, style area in the hinterlands. There's there's icy mountaintops. There's deserts. You name it. Yeah. Um, and we really wanted to get that strong visual variety. Make sure people could, in some ways, almost get like a break. Like, hey, wow, I I want to. Um, I, I'm getting a little tired of deserts. Let's move around. Yeah. And there's lots of content at different level bands. Uh, it doesn't scale. You can see right here. We're up against not not too tough um, enemies at this point, but. Uh, if you came here at a very high level, you'd be able to just waltz through these guys. Or yeah, if you came here absolutely. even a little lower, it'd be tough. Yeah. Now, I know you're not on the beach anymore, but we have a couple of people wondering what happens if you go for a dip wearing plate mail. <laughs> So we um, we've we actually died. got a fair amount of questions. Uh, yes. So we did not we did not go for swimming for Inquisition. Nope. Um, it's something we're actually keen to, to look at for future iterations. But yeah. we we had jumping, open worlds. But we had a bunch of stuff we wanted to tackle for this game. So yeah. we said, okay, swimming's not really the top priority. No. Um, so basically, if you go swimming, you hear kind of a gurgling sound, and you end up kind of washed back up on the beach, yeah. and you can restart from there. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, uh, you can play the game in, in uh, I guess, action mode, which was what we were initially doing there, and then uh, I've swapped in here to the tactical view, uh, which is, lets you really have a think about the battlefield and lets you look yeah. around, see what enemies you're fighting. The more you learn about the enemies, the more you'll see in this sort of mm -hmm. uh, little stat here. Uh, so you'll be able to see whether they're weak to cold or, yep. or whether they're taunted, etc. Um, and you've got complete control over this uh, tactical camera now, uh, which is really neat. So being able to zoom in really close and you followers. can you can Arr, advance. Whoa. whoa, yeah, that's that's a nice shot. Also, yeah. I love I love the way the rain is actually paused. Yeah, isn't it? And you're kind of moving between the raindrops. Yeah. It's all Matrix. Yeah, it is Matrix. Um, I feel so, like Neo right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah you are the <laughs> one. You're not the one. I'm really not. No. Uh, uh, and then you can issue orders to your party. So yep. you can flip around here, and I might tell, uh, say, um, Sarah to go and use uh, Twin Fangs on this archer over here. And that, of course, will set her basic attack target as well, so she'll continue to focus on that guy. Kind of be sticky. You're like, okay, go use an ability on him, but then she'll continue fighting. Exactly him. right. Uh, and then we might do a... Uh... You're too far. Oh. You're out of range. Oh, I'm out of range. Okay. All right. And then I can allow time to keep going, and it will go and uh, execute those those tactics and those commands, which is very neat. Yep, and then you can point any time again. Yep. Yep. All right. 
Alright, okay, now I'm back into more of an action sort of view. Alright, you can also see we've got some barriers on here. So, Vivian, who I'd built to be a little bit supportive, she's yeah. cast a barrier on us. It helps mitigate some of the damage there. Alright, so now we need to look around for some clues. And after you clear an area of enemies, are they going to respawn? Yeah, the um, the there are major encounters, so like places, ones that are kind of fixed. So the dragon in the area will not just keep popping back up and reappearing. Yep. But in the case of an area that's infested with bandits or where dark spawn are coming out of the ground or anything along those lines, um, you will get a steady stream of that. The way we've built the system, though, is that it's like um, almost like an ecology happening. So the game is constantly tracking the effects you've had on area. If you've basically depopulated the area of bandits, then the spawn rate will drop way down for yep. a period of time and then climb back up. So if you leave the area and come back, they'll, they'll have res respawned as time passes. That's right. So the end result then is that <coughs> you come into an area, you feel like, oh, wow, this, this place is full of bears. Eventually the bears wear down. You can then search around, look around, not being threatened yep. or, or, or roughed up. But if you were hunting bears for their hides or something, then you're actually moving. Usually you move around different hunting zones. Oh, here's bears over here. Okay, I've worn them out over here. And you end up kind of... Uh, hunting in a more reasonable pattern. Yeah. Um, same thing if you're looking for specific bad guys because you're trying to collect items they drop or, or um, pursue a specific quest where you want to uh, actually get your research on Darkspawn. Up. Yeah, absolutely. And you might go Darkspawn hunting for a while because then you permanently do more damage against them from that point on. Exactly. All right, so it looks like we've found some dead soldiers here, which is what, we're, what we've been trying to find. Uh, and there's some things to check out here. Looks like the bandits are camped further along the beach. Okay. All right, so we've found some more information about this particular Our quest chain. Our men were murdered by a group called the Blades of Hesarian. It seems there's a way to challenge their leader. Naming themselves after the sword that killed Andraste. Ambitious. They have traditions. These men were just following a code. If the Inquisition can win their loyalty, we could steer them on a better path. He's so Black inspiring. He is, He's isn't so he? inspiring. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the options that we have with this quest now? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, know, if you if you read through the quickly took a look at the text there, you can see that these guys, like like Blackwall says, they do actually have a code, and he points out that you could um, steer them. So, if you look at the quest tracker on the right side of the screen, you notice it has an optional task. Now, finding the bands and dealing with them, I think you're making your way over to their headquarters now. Yeah. Um, you could we could barge in there, kill them, wipe them out, no problem, or if we wanted to, we'd have to craft a very specific amulet. And doing so is, is the kind of thing where you engage your Inquisition's crafters, you have to find deep soccer hide and serpent stone, which yep. means you have to go hunting for a while because we don't actually have any of those right now. <clears throat> but once you've done so, um, you can then take the, the quest on a different path. And I think we're gonna go, we're gonna do guns blazing, just charge in. But the, yeah. the nice thing is that it does create an alternate route. And, and one of the things we did want to get back to with Inquisition was the sense that, uh, you know, while, while some quests are just simple, like, okay, those, that's where the bad guys are, or find the thing, um, that, that there are some where you actually have opportunities where you can do better, right? Yes. You can do well or even better. And in the case of turning these guys to my side, if mm. you can pull that off, which is pretty challenging, yeah. um, they'll end up working for you. Yep. Right? And that's, that's it's, it's, a, it's a very different way to approach that quest. So that's the bandit camp down there. Uh, you can see the, they're in a very defensive position. A palisade. Yes. Indeed. But, I mean, look at, like, you can go all around here. I mean, this is an amazing uh, experience to be able to bring people into such an open world version of the Dragon Age yep. uh, universe. So, it's so exciting to be able to have that. Well, yeah, and, and big thing for us was, of course, to make sure that the stuff that we saw as central to Dragon Age still worked in an open world context. Nice slide. That was a nice slide. Except nice you really slide. hurt yourself, so you may need a potion now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... Uh, but but anyway, that was some. Those are some mad rails. You just ground yeah. my <laughs> So now um, that he took a pretty heavy fall damage there, can you tell us a little bit about how the health system works? In sure. Dragon Age? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Inquisition in specific has um, the idea of persistent damage. Uh, when your character is hurt, they remain hurt. However, at any point, you can go back to one of your Inquisition camps. You can also fast travel back to them. Just warp right back there, and yep. once you do so, you will rest. Resting not only. Um, heals up your character but if you notice we have our potions across the bottom of the yeah, screen down, yeah. we have uh seven healing potions with us yep. that's kind of two per party member yeah we could carry more and i got some antivan fire oh I nice bought, i bought the recipe and then yeah crafts and antivan yeah, fire yeah. is awesome yeah. uh it's it's part of our area denial mechanics right yep. throw a big patch of flame that enemies don't want to be in no. um so the again as the health remains you know black wall isn't healing up 
Uh, what will happen, actually, we have a bug in this build, is... is oh, no, it wouldn't be on this build. Um, is that, based on your difficulty, characters will heal up to a minimum at yep. the end of combat, but after that, it's up to you to manage their health. So, we've uh, added a bunch of new systems. Uh, Alchemy allows you to do everything from regen potions to a thrown grenade that can mm -hmm. heal an area, to your own healing potions, um, which are party-wide. What about uh, my favorite, the uh, jar of bees? I don't Will think we have the I don't bees have jar of bees in this particular Too bad. Build. Sorry, mate. Too bad. Nuts. Okay. So Cam's going to enter stealth. Uh, we're going to heal Blackwall because, of course, if he's, if he's yeah. interacting as support, then we don't want to do that. Exactly. And I might get a barrier on my party as well. Whoa. Zoomed in a little closer. Yep. All right, so the barrier will catch an area, heal them up. Barriers do decay over time. They're not kind of the I win button. Though, exactly. again, further into the game, you're able to further specialize your characters. You showed off some of the basic kind of talent trees. There's also specialist trees, which allow you to get better barriers, or you can focus on uh, uh, more debilitation to your enemies, and yep. so on, based on how your characters are built. Now, Blackwall's also used uh, the Warhorn, which is cool. It's exactly what I wanted to do. Yep. Very neat. That uh, guy's frozen, and you just got a shatter, yeah. which is a cross-class combo. Essentially, being able to hit a disabled enemy with a massive blow, so you do so, you know, triple, double damage, yeah. that kind of thing. And of course, has the huge knockdown, takes him out of the fight for a little bit. Immensely satisfying. It is. I think after this fight, Mark, do you want to take a play? Have sure. A yeah. Play? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. <coughs> All right, so this leaves us just outside of the compound. You want me to go in and, and try yep. and tackle it? You can okay. do it. I'll yep. see what I can All do. Right. Sorry, guys. Okay. I'm just swap Head a switch. Bit. Ow. Easy, Cameron. Yeah, Easy. I just hit my. S oh, you got a big head. I have an enormous head. It's true. Yeah. Through the magic that is production, All right, there we they go. did not see this magical transfer. <laughs> They nice. just, they they just see me it. smack my they did, they face did, they with they her. Her. <laughs> We really should have muted. Oh, I would have regret that. You know what? This is what I love about Twitch. It's so raw. Mm -hmm. It's unfettered. Okay, we're going in. All right, let's see. There's Tac Cam, a little mouse wheel action. All right, what have I got to work with here? Now, uh, one thing, I don't know if we even talked about this last time we talked about PC. There is keyboard quick commands for almost We seven. never did, no. Yeah, so I'm just using F1 through F4 here. To swap between the uh, the different characters. That's cool. Makes it very nice. Um, again, I do have direct command. I can also let their AI just go. But we'll go through. I'm a little rusty on this control scheme, but I think we should be good. Okay, step Let's one for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Take a look around. So I'm I have full control over my camera, as Cameron pointed out. I can scope the battlefield, see what's going on. Uh, let's see what we have here. Archer, Archer. Okay, those. I normally two take out archers. Yeah, they're high damage. Yeah, absolutely. This guy... It's a bug. We shouldn't have... Uh, His name should not be Archer. He has a giant shield. Yeah. Ah! Nibari. And there would be the ringer. This is why scouting can really pay off. Yeah. Take a look at what else you're facing. And then that leader there. Just want to hover mm -hmm. over him. Yeah. I, th I think he's an elite. Yeah, he's... Uh, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Ooh, he's going to be tough. He is tough. But, I, yeah. but really? Really? It I is a pretty cool him. axe. And as a dwarf, him. I think we need to get that axe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that 